Hi everyone, hope you are doing well from whatever you're watching this channel, depending on your time zone. Now, it has reached a point whereby William Ruto allies are sensing a danger in the manner in which Ruto is driving our economy. And instead of religiously supporting everything that Ruto is doing, they are changing their mind. There are things they support and there are other things that they are now coming out clear to speak about. Someone like Senior Counsel Ahmed Nasir is a diehard of William Ruto. He has always used his social media accounts to support him. We have seen him even supporting Ugly in Kenya Kwanzaa. But he was on Spice FM for an interview. And uh, the remarks he gave in that interview is contrary to what he has been supporting. This is a man who is confirming here that indeed Kenyans have forgotten their civic duty to put government on check, audit the government, put it on pressure, demonstrate, picket to send a message to the regime. It's clear that indeed Raila has tried to play this role and he believed that when Raila comes out to point fingers at the government when they fail, he manages because people normally join him in that rallying call and uh, he pressurizes the government to do some things here and there. So there are things is confirming very clear that indeed even our parliament, it is dead. It does not represent you. It does not represent me. It does not represent him. They are there for their own personal interest and their stomach reality. So I want us to go deep into that to understand really what is it trying to tell the public. But uh, before, before we go into this, there's a story from a needy student that I would like you to listen to. And indeed, if you can help, you can just do so. And God is going to bless you. I have never done this, but I am pushed to try this one also on this page line. Though I know uh, you guys on this platform, you have been so grateful and helpful to me. So I tried to reach out to one of the needy families and I discovered that uh, there are some issues that actually need some help. We have a family whereby uh, they lost their, their dad and that was the only breadwinner. And uh, this was a single parent family. So we have um, a student in the family now, he was in Form 3, now going to Form 4 this year. But there's the issue to do with the school fees. So you find out that the sister, who is also just still young, has now to struggle to try and uh, get some money, maybe for food, and at the same time to try and pay school fees. So there is actually financial constraint. And there is a need, it's a really, really a needy situation. Whereby now this boy has the only hope he has is to finish from four, but there's no money. So it is my humble request that if you are touched, you can help in whichever way, please, you can do so. So I'm going to place my MPESA number here, and then you can send us whatever you can. And we will make sure that he's back in school and I will share you the I will, I will share with you the progress after we will manage to have a breakthrough. Now his name is Martin Agalomba. I think you have something you can tell them about yourself, just to express yourself that you can understand the story I'm talking about. Yes, hello. I'm Martin Agalomba, a student at Chabogere Secondary School. I'm going at Form 4 this year. My humble request to you is just to help me because I lost my dad and he was the one in need to take care of me. Now I have my sister, but he's jobless, just hustling to get me money and basic needs. I just wish you can help. Now, if you look at him and you look at the sister, the difference is just small. So you can imagine. The sister is the one now to struggle uh, as a breadwinner of the family and at the same time try to get something to make sure that he's going to school. So whichever amount small she will get 
and just trying to talk with the principal in school. That's how they have been surviving. But that is the situation. So, yeah. Okay, my dear. Hi, guys. I'm Sheila. I just need your help to support my brother. I'm jobless, but I know God will do it. Amen. So, the schools yeah. are opening on Wednesday. And uh, he's going to form for, as I had said earlier. And uh, for him to get uh, the best support ever is just to be in the boarding section because now, imagine back home struggling to have the maybe power for study. At the same time, the issue to do now managing to have basic needs at home, it is also a challenge. So he is in Chavogere Secondary School. They have boarding and day section. So with the boarding section, you need to have like 40,000 to finish a year. That is three term. In that way, he'll have closed the issue to do with the school fees. So with, uh, for any help, you can reach out to me on 07 08 34 00 92. 07 08 34 00 92. Um, I, will, I will make sure that whatever we get, I shout the figures and we get to the school and pay clear and let him be in school. It is my hope and my prayer. So please, if you are touched with this story, just help us. Now, I want to listen to Ahmed Nasr giving his views on what we Kenyans we need to do when you have a regime that does not listen to the people a regime that does not represent the interest of the people, an oppressive regime. What is your civic duty? What are you supposed to do? You watch and wait for Aila? Or there is something you can do about this? <laughs> Listen to him shortly, then we are going to continue with our discussion. Kenyans think it's only Raila whose job it is to put government in check. In check. When he puts in check, you know, everybody rallies around him. The NGOs, the women organization, the small business, everybody comes. And, uh, you know, a government feels the weight of the people. If Raela keep quiet, everybody disperses. And I think people should realize, you know, that is not just Raela's job. I mean, it's every Kenyan's job to audit the government, to put pressure on it, to question its decisions, even to, demonst to demonstrate, you know, mm. to pick it. You know, to, uh, if we become very active, if we discharge our civic duty as Kenyans. people, eh, eh, then the government will feel, it will feel the pressure. It will feel, don't you? I mean, parliament is not representative of anybody. My MP does not represent me. Yes. <laughs> yes. I, he knows. I mean, I vote in Karen. <laughs> it's this guy, this guy who, Jalango. Jalango, who, who is in transition from one party. <laughs> He's entitled to that. I have no yeah. problem. But he does not represent, he is not aware of my issues. Mm. Yes, yes. He is not aware of the issues of, you know, Saudi or Langata, leave alone current. I mean, the system doesn't work, we know. So it is, we should not leave these things to our members of parliament. We should not leave these things to our government. There is a duty on us as Kenyans, you know, civic duty to question government, to put pressure. Now we are continuing this panel discussion, but just a quick request. For those who are watching and you have not subscribed, please consider subscribing to our channel. Express Master, thank you so much. And again, to all our viewers, please give this video a thumbs up. Thank you so much. And before I forget, I want to thank Lillian Hope. I've received your support. I also want to thank Amara. Thank you so much. I've received your support. And let us continue to uh, show our support to this. Uh, student so that he can be able to do his form 4 exam and move forward. Thank you and back to the discussion. According to Ahmed Nasser, which is true, if you discharge your uh, civic duty as Kenyans, then we can pressurize the government. They will feel the pressure. They can do something. What is the meaning of this? Ahmed Nasir is telling Kenya that if you feel that Ruto has failed you, 
it is time to exercise our civic duty, protest, demonstrate, picket, send a message to the government, force William Ruto to do things here and there, and they have to do it. He can do it. This is a man who supports Ruto, but he is informing us that we have to put pressure on Ruto to do the right thing. So he's confirming to us that Ruto has failed. He's confirming to us that his man that he supports, he does not represent the interest of Kenyans. It is only his own personal interest. He does not work for us. He is a man who is working for himself. Therefore, Amen Nasser is telling you and me that there is no one who is representing us in this government. The only thing we can do when we see someone is failing us is exactly what Raila Odinga had informed Kenyans. So Ruto allies are in agreement with Raila Odinga that to deal with this government of Kenya Kwanzaa, we have to come out and demonstrate. We have to come out and protest because they have failed completely. It is true in saying that the parliament is not representing Kenyans. So we have to push by ourselves. Why is the parliament not representing us? It is simply because parliament is being micromanaged by the executive. And who is that executive? William Samway Ruto. Ahmed Nasser's president, his boss, and a man he support. So, before I talk about parliament being gagged, he has to know who has gagged the parliament, his boss. So it is true, our parliament is not working. We have seen so many sponsored bills that are against the people. But these bills have never been shut down because majority of members of parliament are easily bought by William Ruto. It's only few from Azmio who stand out and speak their mind even if they cannot change anything, at least they have been heard. Even if they don't have numbers, at least you can hear what they are debating about. So, Ruto has managed to micromanage the, exact, uh, the, the parliament. They cannot have independent thinking they don't even sponsor their own bills. They wait for directive from the from the executive. And he goes to an extent of even threatening these members of parliament that Ninangoja niona yule manyata piga kura kinyume na uamuza mbawa nimefana. They have those sound bars. That's William Ruto. You know, if our parliament was not micromanaged by executive, at least we would have some hope that the parliament can speak for us. But because the parliament has failed to speak for us, the same William Ruto is threatening the judiciary. We don't have hope. We have nowhere to hide. We have nowhere to go to when we have a problem, but only being forced to be on the street to demonstrate. He confirmed that Raila has done it very well. And when Raila Odinga does it, everyone rallies around him. That's true. NGOs, other people, and Kenyans at large, they will join him. So Raila has always managed to deal with the regimes that is anti-people. So we have to learn that despite the fact that Raila has been leading, we also have a duty. We just don't need to wait for Raila to lead. We can also call for mass action and maybe Raila can also join us. Sometimes they say, when the revolution is started by the people down there, it is successful, but not by leaders on top there. So that's the, uh, the message that uh, Ahmed Nasir is saying, that let us start this, let us lead this, then other leaders will join in and see the serious in, seriousness in it, and it is going to be successful. <laughs> William Ruto allies are calling for demonstrations against their master. They are calling for mass action against their boss. And the reasons are obvious. I don't know your views, 
Let us meet in the comment section to continue with this discussion. Thank you and see you in our next video.